All right, I am back with another video, and immediately I'll apologise right off the bat. My audio is going to sound a bit weird today because I am a bit ill, but I still wanted to get this recorded and out for you guys, so I'm pushing through it. Anyways, today we are doing uh, another deity build, and this one was a highly requested one. We are doing Vlakith today. Now, Vlakith, yes, technically isn't a deity in the regular sense, but she can be selected as a deity to worship in the cleric uh, kind of class list here in Baldur's Gate 3, so we decided to count it, and the fact that she has such a direct connection to the plot of Baldur's Gate made it even more interesting to build for. So, Again, this build was made as part of a community effort over on my live stream, so if you want to be able to join in and be a part of these videos in the future, do check out the live streams. But as we were kind of deliberating um, as to how to actually build this, what classes to use, whatever, I kind of had an idea. There are these very high-ranking GIF Yankee in um, Vlakif's kind of, I guess, guard, I suppose, which she directly infused with red dragon blood, turning them into Githyanki dragon hybrids that are capable of powerful magical feats. And I think for a chosen of Vlakif, it's less about what, you know, just Vlakif picking somebody who's a very strong warrior, it's about what that person who is very close to Vlakif, someone that she directly chooses, can offer her. And in this case, I think it ties back to her lichdom. So liches don't just exist, right? They need to maintain their lich form, usually through the collection of souls. Now there's a bit of headcanon here, I understand that, but the idea of a chosen of Vlakith being one of these Dugakith, these uh, red, dra red dragon blood infused gif, uh, kind of being like her closest, I guess, sp not ally, but like kind of her closest subordinate that she deliberately sets out to fetch souls, powerful souls, to maintain her lichdom, felt like a really, really interesting idea. So we came up with the Chosen of Vlakith, the Soul Reaper, someone who goes out of their way to, co to collect powerful souls to fuel um, Vlakith's undeath, and I thought it worked out absolutely perfectly, and I'm really happy with the build we've been able to come up with. So. Let's get into it. I've decided to kick things off as a Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer because, well, I knew there was going to be Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer levels in this, and this is going to give us a few things like, namely, Constitution Saving for Proficiency, a bunch of really useful level 1 spells, and the rest. As well as playing as a Gith Yankee, we're going to be able to pick up Astral Knowledge, allowing us to gain proficiency in all skills of a chosen ability once per long rest, which is nice. As for our cantrips, I would say pick up Bone Chill, Friends, Acid Splash, and Firebolt. Firebolt because we are a Red Dragon, uh, Red Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, so having a Fire Cantrip makes sense. Acid Splash because it's kind of necromancy e as well as Bone Chill, and Friends because we want advantage on those Charisma checks. Next up, our spells, and I've kind of just gone for some more, like, gift feeling options here. I've gone for Shield and Magic Missile, both kind of feel a bit psychic-y, because the kind of... psychic-y? Eh, I suppose that works. Because the kind of idea of this build is to combine the kind of psionic elements of the GIF with the red uh, fire elemental magics and combat prowess as well. Kind of get a little bit of everything, and I feel like this starting level is going to give us a lot of that initial magic stuff that we want, and we're going to be able to get more stuff in a minute as well from our multiclassing. As I said, we are a Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, which means we are going to get one eight extra hit point per level in Sorcerer, as well as Unarmored Defense, causing our base armor class to be 13 when we're not wearing armor. We are, we are going to be wearing armor with this build, so this isn't the most important thing, but I thought I'd mention it. And of course, we get to pick our Draconic Ancestry, and we're going with Red, which is going to affect our fire damage. At level 6, our fire damage spells will do even more damage as well, equal to our Charisma modifier. And we're also going to get Burning Hands as well, dealing a bit of fire damage in a cone in front of us. We also get to add some Dragon Scales, and I've... What the... That's new. Okay, uh, we also get to add some Dragon Scales, and as you can see here, we've got some kind of nice dragons, Dragon Scales here. And I've kind of gone for a slightly different look for this gift, with slightly grey and, like, withered skin, because I thought maybe this character would even share a bit of Vlakif's undeath, maybe some sort of, like, direct influence of her power has caused, like, the appearance to be altered. I don't know, I thought it looked cool. Slightly different than your standard gif. 
And finally, the stat spread. We have a strength at 8 because we don't need it. Dexterity at 14 because you're going to be wearing medium or heavy armor with this build. So 14 is just enough. Constitution at 16. This is going to give us a decent pool of HP as well as decent constitution saving throws. Intelligence and wisdom are both at 10. I didn't really want either one of these to be at 8, so I just had them at 10. And charisma at 16 because it is going to be our main spellcasting stat. As for our skill proficiencies, I went with the soldier background to give us athletics and intimidation. Yes, our strength is low, so athletics isn't going to be as useful, but intimidation is something we definitely want, and I felt like the soldier background and how you get inspiration from it made the most sense. We also get to pick up Arcana and Persuasion as well, although I can see you just swapping out Arcana for Religion because, you know, Vlakith. At level 2, I'm going to be taking a quick multi-class dip into Cleric. With these deity builds, if the deity is selectable in game you want to get at least one level of cleric in as soon as you can and we're actually going to get a ton of benefits from this because we are going with the war domain war domain is going to allow us three additional attacks using our bonus action per long rest which is nice it's going to allow us to select vlakith as our deity meaning that now we get vlakith related dialogue which that is unique to us which is great we get a prepared spell and i'm going to be picking sanctuary because sanctuary is going to allow us to do a lot of cool stuff and make a lot of tough combat scenarios much easier. And finally, our cantrips are going to be Resistance, Guidance, and Thaumaturgy, meaning that now we have a lot of options for boosting our efficiency in dialogue. As well as we get access to all martial weapons, which we are going to want, as I've got a martial weapon that obviously we wouldn't normally get by starting as a sorcerer, so that's perfect for us. Now, going forward, you can kind of take the rest of the levels in this build in any order you want. I'm just going to be showing off our main class first, the one that we take the most levels in, that being Sorcerer, and then the final multi-class after that. But it's up to you, you know, kind of how you want to level this up if you want to focus on the martial stuff or the magic stuff first. I personally want to focus on the magic stuff first, so I'm going to go with that. For our spells at level 2 of Sorcerer, we get to pick another one, and it's entirely up to you what you want to grab here, it really doesn't matter. I kind of like picking up Chromatic Orb, as that's going to give us another fire damage spell that we can use. As well as our Meta Magic, we're going to be picking up Twinned and Careful Spell. As our rate For our race, we also get uh, basically Enhanced Leap once per long rest, thanks to being a Githyanki, which is okay. At level 3, we get to pick another spell, and we're up to level 2 spells at this point. Sticking with the fire theming, I want to grab Scorching Ray, giving us a pretty decent fire attack. And for our meta magic, we finally get it, Quickened Spell, which is going to be a huge help for this build. At Sorcerer at level 4, we get to choose our first feat. And I'm going to suggest picking up an ability score improvement and bumping up that charisma to 18. This is going to give us even better spell casting and later on even better melee attacks. As for our cantrips, we get to pick another one and I'm going to grab Poison uh, Spray. As for our spells here, I'm going to be picking up Hold Person. I think it works quite nicely for this build, being able to hold a humanoid in place and deal a bunch of damage. It's going to be great if you can use it on humanoid enemies. Not so much monsters though, unfortunately. At level 5, we are going to be able to pick up level 3 spells, and of course I want Fireball. Fireball is our big fire damage spell that's going to do a ton of damage for us. Uh, 8d6 fire damage to be precise, which is going to get even better with Draconic Sorcerer at level 6, which is going to give us two things. Elemental Affinity Damage, adding our Charisma modifier to the damage of our fire attacks, as well as the ability to gain resistance to fire damage by spending a sorcery point. Never ever do this, it's not worth it. As for our spells, we do get to pick another one, and I know Haste is right there, but we actually are going to be getting it a different way. So I'm going with Counter Spell, because again, I think it makes a lot of sense to have that on this build. Now, we're going to jump into our final multi-class, and it is going to be Warlock. Warlock is going to give us a ton of things, namely our subclass. If you want more fire-themed stuff, the theme the fiend would make sense, but we'll be going with Great Old One because Vlakif is old. Very old. And Great is up for debate, but we're definitely going to get be old, and I think it makes sense that she would also directly influence this character's power with a little bit of her own, like I said, that whole undeath thing. So this build is packing holy powers because we worship a deity, it's picking up fire dragon powers because we're part dragon, and we're picking up 
old bench powers, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, Great Old One is going to give us something really cool, namely Mortal Reminder, allowing us to, whenever we roll, land a critical hit, that creature must make a wisdom save or become frightened. We also get to pick up a couple of cantrips, and you already know we're grabbing Eldritch Blast, as well as Mage Hand, because again, we do get this from being a Githy Yankee, but now it's not limited to once per long rest, we could just use Mage Hand whenever we like, but Eldritch Blast is going to be the big one here. And for our spells as a Warlock, I want to pick up a couple of Dissonant Whispers for that kind of psychic attack, and Hellish Rebuke for a more unique fire attack that we wouldn't get anywhere else. Next up at Warlock level 2, we get to pick up some Invocations, and of course we're going to be picking up Agonizing Blast to add our Charisma modifier to the damage of our Eldritch Blast, as well as Devil's Sight to be able to see in magical and non-magical darkness. And we also do get to pick up another spell at this point, and it really doesn't matter what you pick up, we're not really going to be using any of these. I could see Armor of Agathis being powerful for you, giving you extra temporary HP and 5 cold damage when you're hit, so you know what, we'll grab that. At level 3 we get to pick up Pact Boon, and of course we're going with Pact of the Blade. This is going to allow us to bind our main hand weapon, so that it uses our Charisma for the attack and damage rolls. Up for our spells we get to pick level 2 options from here, and of course I want Darkness. This is the Darkness Devil Sight combo, we're getting everything that a Sawlock loves here. Next up at Warlock level 4 we do get to choose an extra feat, and I'm going to be going, well, it's up to you. You can go in with an ability score improvement and bump your charisma up to uh, 20 if you like, but we can get it up to 20 with a piece of equipment, so I'm actually going to recommend Great Weapon Master here. Since we are going to be using two-handed weapons with this build, this is going to work out quite nicely. Uh, whenever we land a critical hit or kill a target with a melee weapon attack, we can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action, meaning that we don't have to use our war caster charges if we land a critical hit or kill a target. As well as whenever we make attacks with melee weapons that we are proficient with and are wielding in both hands, we can deal an additional 10 damage at the cost of a negative 5 attack roll penalty. Uh, basically, this means that we are going to be able to do a lot more damage with our main hand attacks, making both our magic and our melee combat viable in most situations. And because we have things like haste, uh, darkness, devil sight, we're going to be able to offset that penalty quite easily. We do get another cantrip at this point, and I'll pick up Minor Illusion, and we also do get another level 2 spell at this point, and I quite like picking up Misty Step for that versatility. And finally, at Warlock level 5, we are going to be getting extra attack with our packed weapon, which is nice, as well as another level 3 spell. And it's entirely up to you what you want to pick here. It really doesn't matter. You could go with more of the Gith Yankee uh, psychic thing, maybe with something like Crown of Madness, Fear, Hypnotic Pattern, Enthrall, or Mirror Image. I can see Mirror Image being quite useful, so I'm going to pick that up. We also get another Eldritch Invocation, and I can't see anything wrong with, with taking Repelling Blast to push enemies away. And that is the build. Overall, you're going to be getting a ton out of this. Tons of melee power, tons of magic power, a lot of versatility between being able to use fire spells, Eldritch Blast, Haste, Darkness, Misty Step. Uh, being single stat dependent, mainly needing our charisma, is great. And as such, you're also going to be getting really helpful utility spells, all the good cleric cantrips that can help you in dialogue, as well as things like Sanctuary to be able to, you know, basically render some combat completely fruitless easy like enemies won't even be able to hit you it really does work i think this is a pretty solid kit to have i mean sawlock is powerful anyway and with that little dip into war cleric it really does begin to shine but let's get into the equipment as for our equipment we've got a pretty standard charisma set here but i've gone for some changes namely the birthright hat is pretty standard giving us a plus two to our charisma but again if you didn't take great weapon master and decided to bump up charisma anyway you might want to consider this the circlet of psionic revenge allowing you to whenever you succeed a saving throw the throw that this the foe that caused the throw takes 1d4 psychic damage and also because we're a gif yankee we gain a plus one bonus to intelligence wisdom and charisma saves so over and this is just a nice option to grab anyway before you get the birthright hat so i would say either or depending on how you level this build. Next up is our armor, the Reaper's Embrace. I mean, of course I was going to use Reaper's Embrace, it has Reaper in the name. All incoming damage against us is reduced by 2, comes with a nice 19 armor class as well, making us quite tanky. When activated, you cannot be moved against your will by any spell or action, but have disadvantage on dex saves. So a bit of a double-edged sword there, but it just means that you'll be able to stand firm in most situations. 
And finally, it also comes with a unique ability called Howl of the Dead that can numb nearby creatures. Numbing basically means that they have their movement speed halved and the caster and the spellcaster has advantage on attack rolls against them. So this can just be another way to offset that Great Weapon Master penalty as well. Uh, but of course you can also pick up the psionic ward armor also in act 2 uh, if the item detects that the wearer is gith they have resistance to psychic damage which is nice so an extra resistance always great and they also whenever the wearer succeeds a saving throw they regain 1d4 hit points so it really isn't either or it's down to personal preference you'll obviously have a bit less uh, ac if you don't go with the heavy armor but i think they both look all right as for our gloves, I've gone with the Legacy of the Masters, giving us a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls with weapons, basically just giving us a flat damage boost as well as a higher chance to hit to help offset Great Weapon Master. But in the mean, but these are Act Three, so in the meantime, you can pick up the Dark Justicia Gauntlets, allowing your weapon attacks to deal an additional one d four necrotic damage. And finally, I've got the Boots of Striding, allowing us to, whenever we uh, cast a spell that requires our concentration, we gain a we gain momentum for one turn, which is just going to give us a little bit of a movement speed buff, allowing us to get into melee range if we want, or out of melee range. But also, while we are concentrating, we cannot be knocked prone or moved against our will. We already couldn't be moved against our will, but not being knocked prone, meaning that we cannot drop concentration, is seriously amazing. And these are picked up in Act 1, so they're perfect. But, as an Act 3 option, you can also pick up the Boots of Psionic Movement, allowing you, because we are Ricky of Yankee, to fly, and whenever we do, uh, we gain a bit of extra psychic damage on our next melee weapon attack. This is just a little bit of maneuverability, but honestly, I would just go with the boots of striding here. I think they're the better better option. I haven't included the cloak on this build for fashion reasons, but the nymph cloak for dominate person or the cloak of displacement for a disadvantage on attack rolls against you could absolutely work, so feel free to pick those up in Act 3. They're both Act 3 if you want. As for our accessories, I've gone for the Aberration Hunter's Amulet. A Givianki wearing this amulet has advantage on, in on intelligence saves, and Aberrations also have disadvantage on attack rolls against them. So, for those of you that don't know, Aberrations are kind of like Mind Flayers and stuff like that. Which makes sense. Also, it comes with a unique class action that you can spend as a bonus action once per short rest called Ancient Grudges, allowing you to touch your amulet to subsume a sliver of knowledge of the gift. You gain advantage on attack rolls against aberrations. This is mainly just purely here for flavor. Feel free to put anything else in this slot if you like, but I kind of thought I kind of have to include it because, well, if we're doing a very black if deity build and we're all focused on gift Yankee stuff, it made sense to pick this up. Also, for, I've kind of gone for these standard kind of spell sword rings, that being the Ring of Arcane Synergy, allowing us to, whenever we deal damage with a cantrip, probably Eldritch Blast, we gain Arcane Synergy, meaning that our um, spell casting modifier is added to our weapon's damage. So, because we're all in on Charisma, we gain a lot of extra damage. And finally, the Strange Conduit Ring, allowing us to, while concentrating, which we should be doing all the time, our wearer, the wearer's weapon attacks deal an additional 1d4 psychic damage. Pretty standard spell sword stuff. And finally, the weapons. I'm My personal choice for this build is the Dancing Breeze. It is a glaive, which I, which kind of looks scythe-ish to me. I mean, we can't really get a scythe in this game, unfortunately. I was I absolutely would. But this kind of felt appropriate enough, and I think looks badass. Uh, it's actually a finesse weapon, so you can use it with your dexterity, which is very rare. But for us, it doesn't matter. It's going to be our packed weapon, so we're going to be using it with our charisma anyway. But it also comes with the unique whirlwind attack, allowing us to strike out and damage all nearby foes, making separate attack rolls against each of them. So if you're surrounded by a group of enemies, you can... Um, you know, just obliterate them all, especially with Great Weapon Master, attacking each of them individually. Tell you what, wait till you're surrounded by enemies, cast darkness on yourself, whirlwind attack, they're dead. They're just straight up dead. <laughs> But of course, there are other weapon options, and I will mention the elephants in the room here. V2 Gif Yankee Greatswords. Uh, these are pretty standard on every Gif Yankee build, and are definitely the most powerful thing uh, you could use. But I just wanted to use something different that I felt looked cooler, but I'll go over them anyway, because yes, if you went with these, they would be more powerful. The Soulbreaker Greatsword deals an additional 1d4 psychic damage when wielded by a Gif, and also gives you a plus 2 to your initiative rolls, as well as giving you the Soulbreaker Weapon action, which deals extra psychic damage and can stun an enemy. The Silver Sword of the Astral Plane is a stronger version of that, dealing a 1d6 psychic damage, is a plus 3 legendary weapon, and the Gif Yankee holding this weapon has advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saves, resistance to psychic damage, and cannot be charmed, as well as getting an even better version of the Soulbreaker, well, actually it's the same. 
that version of the Soul Breaker. So, you know, great weapon. In fact, if we look at the attack rolls for this, goddamn. And it looks cool, but personally, I prefer the Dancing Breeze for this build. But if you're more into Halberds, we could go with the Halberd of Vigilance, which would uh, give you a little bit of extra force damage, a plus one bonus to initiative rolls and advantage on perception checks, as well as whenever you make an attack roll as a reaction, you can make it with advantage. This is more if you have Polon Master, so maybe if you wanted to swap out uh, Great Weapon Master for Polon Master instead, you could go with this one. But I just prefer the Dancing Breeze overall. It would be my weapon of choice because I like it. Also, just so you are aware, this is using a modded die for all of the armors, particularly the Krabat die from the Boring Die Pack mod. So if you want to recreate this look, uh, you'll need that mod, but otherwise I find that the Black and Furnace Red die also looks pretty good with these armor pieces. Uh, so yeah, that is the build, and overall, I mean... It's a saw lock and a powerful one at that. Powerful fire damage attacks, powerful attacks thanks to great weapon um, master combined with goo warlock with packs of the blade. You're just going to be doing a ton of damage. That war cleric dip allowing us to get even more attacks and great weapon master allowing us to do the same in certain situations. You're going to be able to melee attack. You're going to be able to magic attack. You're going to be able to do everything. Having the level three spell slots to recover on a short rest is great as well as up to level four spell slots with just your regular spell slots and the sorcery points to be able to quicken things and extend things and do all this and uh, it's it's perfect. I absolutely love this build. I also, the combat footage I'll be playing, but I'll just quickly go over it. Yes, we are using the Dark Fire Shortbow, I just realized I forgot to mention that. That's just going to give us resistance to fire and cold damage, which made sense for a red Dragonborn build, as well as giving us haste as well, so we can use haste. Forgot to mention it, but there you go. And yeah, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Again, apologies for my voice. I sound raspy like Batman, which would, I guess if I'm going to record a video, this build would probably have a kind of raspy, deep, uh, uh, I am death kind of voice <laughs> in fact it really is starting to go uh <laughs> but yeah um i mean this will be going up literally later today because i'm recording this on the friday morning uh so i mean hopefully it goes I, I mean hopefully you guys enjoy it hopefully the video goes well and again if you made it to the end of this despite the fact that my voice sounds the way it does i genuinely applaud you because that must have been hard to listen to Anyways, that is going to be all from me. I'll leave you with the combo footage now just to kind of let it keep playing because I want to give my voice a bit of a rest now because I've just been talking for God knows how long. So I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching.